came out of the river. I know it sounds a little far-fetched, but that's what we believe, our creation site, that the story I've been told is we're salmon people, we're strong people, and we come from this river. We didn't come from Africa, we didn't come from the land bridge from Asia, we came from right here. And we came out of the water, the Creator bathed us in one hole, and then the Creator rinsed us in the other hole, and then He decided what our role in our life and in our tribe would be. I can imagine that the river was free flowing, full of all five species of salmon, 10 species of trout. And I can imagine, like the settlers said, you could walk across the stream on the salmon's backs. But I think the settlers created this place on the backs of salmon. So you can imagine in the late 1800s, um, the Olympic Peninsula was far out there. It was, you know, the last frontier in the lower 48 states. And a man named Thomas Aldwell arrived on the peninsula. I guess you would say Thomas Aldwell was an entrepreneur. Um, he was a businessman. And one of the things that he felt was really holding back development on the peninsula was a lack of a reliable supply of electricity. And so he went about securing the financing and locating the sites um, to build a couple of hydroelectric projects. When they put in this first dam, it, it uh, flooded our creation site, and that's where we come from. It was devastating. Our social and economic way of life was immediately altered. These fish would swim up here to this site and they would stop. They would literally bump against the dam trying to complete their mission, their, their journey to spawn. Before the dams uh, were installed, the Elwha near shore was a vastly different place for fish and things that depended on it. I can't imagine how, how my ancestors felt when this big concrete dam was built and their whole way of life depended on this river that was all of a sudden gone. These dams were particularly harmful because there was no fish passage associated with the dams. These dams were built in the early 1900s and even though there were laws in place, no fish passage was allowed so they could not essentially live out their entire life the way they were supposed to. One of the first groups that requested from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that the dams be removed was the Lower Elwha Klallam tribe. We have wanted the dams to come down for my whole life, my mother's life. It's been a hundred years. So we decided to take charge when the licensing ran out. That was our window of opportunity. There was actually a federal lawsuit that was initiated by the Lower Elwha Klallam tribe against the federal government because of the two in-river dams. And that the settlement for that lawsuit was the uh, Elwha River Fisheries Ecosystem Restoration Act. This called for the complete restoration of the Elwha River ecosystem and the return of the native anadromous fish. I was uh, joyous, tearful, happy, but I also knew there was a lot of work ahead of us. It was just words, words from a government we didn't trust, but it was encouraging and we knew once we had that, we could move it. There were continued and significant barriers to the project. All totaled, the project cost about $325 million. There towards the end, we didn't know if or when the project was gonna happen. Part of the um, challenge with removing the Elwha dams is basically trying to figure out how to actually remove the dams. No one has ever tried to remove two dams that are approximately 100 and 200 feet in height. The, the thing that worried me was mostly the funding and, and we sent a congregation of folks every year, twice a year, to go talk to Congress. It uh, shifted literally almost overnight. Basically what happened was the federal government gave all of the national parks a chunk of money to infuse into their parks and the park system, all of the parks in the system pooled their money, I'm gonna cry, gave it to the Elwha and to, excuse me, to Olympic National Park and said, get the dams out. Thank you.
The dams coming out have had dramatic effects on the ecosystem. Probably the most uh, visible effect is out at the mouth of the river, where um, acres and acres of new estuary habitat has been formed. Since these were the largest dam removal to date in the world, nobody really had a blueprint to go by as far as what to expect. Salmon are pretty resilient creatures. They're very opportunistic. And so what we've seen across the Pacific Rim is increases in recovery rates of salmon anywhere from uh, 10 to 40 years in terms of seeing a, a dramatic increase in their populations. Ecosystems are, people kind of perceive them as fragile, but in reality, they're very resilient. They're very strong. And if you give them an opportunity to kind of hone their own way, they can do that. The general public can learn a lot from the Elwha near shore. And one aspect is how heartlifting the restoration project can be, how um, important it is to work together, and how important it is to celebrate when it happens. There was a, there was a big gathering of tribes before the settlers got here. We were putting up a longhouse, and it consists of big logs buried in the ground, and then you have to lift a big log to put your roof on. So we had a competition to see who could put this big log beam up to complete the structure. Several tribes tried it and they couldn't lift this log up, but then the Clallams got in there, they rolled a log into the water, put it on their shoulders, walked out of the water, and then hefted it up in its proper spot. So all the people that were in attendance started chanting and, and singing and calling us Clallams which means strong people. Now you know that we are strong people because we removed two dams. They said it couldn't be done. We did it. It takes strong people to do that. And I say, we are not damned Indians anymore and we got our damn salmon back.